welcome to Let's Talk Aging. I'm Gwyneth Johnson, the CEO of Second Wind Dreams. We are an organization dedicated to changing the perception of aging. And through this series, we want to highlight and focus on organizations and individuals that are working to change that very same perception. Today, we are hosting a conversation with Bradley Spears. He is a Medicare account executive with Kaiser Permanente, Georgia. It is our pleasure to welcome Bradley Spears and to welcome you. Welcome, Bradley. I'd like to introduce you to our audience. This is Bradley Spears, Medicare account executive for Kaiser Permanente, Georgia region, but it's my understanding that you are uh, having a national impact with Kaiser. These days. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. So recently I was awarded the opportunity to go and participate in a uh, commercial that's gonna run for the Southeast region. It was a national uh, talent search. And myself and one other colleague were selected for the Georgia market and it's gonna run in the Southeast. So, so you'll see me on TV very soon. Representing That's Kaiser fantastic, I love it. Yes. Well, let's dive right in okay. and, and, and get to our questions. What is the mission of Kaiser Permanente? Well, that's a good question. The mission of Kaiser Permanente is to provide high quality, affordable health care, but also making sure our members have um, and we, you know, good quality health care and serving the communities and the community, you know, that we that we reside in. Fantastic. And I've had some interaction with Kaiser over the years and have been really impressed at the amount of research that you all are involved in and how embedded in the communities you are. Well, that's a good point. A lot of people don't know this. Here's a fun fact you may or may not know about this, that Kaiser Permanente is a 501c3. And a lot of people don't know that. And because we're not non-for-profit organization, we do a lot of philanthropy, as you indicated. We love to give back to the communities we serve. And we also do a lot of research that you alluded to, and we use that data from the research to better serve our members, to give them, you know, we listen, we give them uh, integration of their healthcare system. We provide them with um, convenient locations. So we, we use that data to better serve our members to make sure they get good quality care. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I don't think people think about it that way. Um, they think about it as a medical organization solely. And it's much more than that. It really is. Kaiser Permanente, we offer a health plan, obviously, mm -hmm. but it, um, but we also, more important is our members and the quality of care that we give and giving back. So you're right. You may hear us, I was watching the news recently, Kaiser was actively, Kaiser Permanente was actively involved in uh, some of the COVID research, COVID-19 research. So you hear mm -hmm. on TV, the Kaiser Foundation and Kaiser Health Plan, two different entities, but one umbrella. So you, yes, we're, we're definitely involved. Fantastic. And I do a lot in the community here locally in the Georgia, right here in the Atlanta area. And I guess we'll cover some of that later, but just to give you an idea, you'll see us at events in the community, maybe Mayfest. It could be at the uh, senior day at the Atlanta Zoo. It could be Tai Chi over at Dunwoody Nature Center, but we do a lot in the community and I'm willing to do a lot more. <laughs> That's wonderful. I'll have to show up for some of that Tai Chi, I think. <laughs> Please do. I, I did it myself. It was Tai Chi and yoga, and it's based on the level of the seniors. So it wasn't fast motion. Very easy to do. A lot of fun. Got a great feedback from that. Wonderful. Well, what led you to Kaiser? That's a good question. You know, I'm recently relocated here to the great state of Georgia, and Kaiser Permanente, I'm from San Diego, and Kaiser Permanente is a household name out there. You'll see the hospitals, you'll see the medical office buildings. So when the opportunity came um, that there's a position here, I jumped on it because of the reputation that Kaiser Permanente has, because of um, just one, I wanted to get in. I love working with seniors, and this was an opportunity for me to work with the senior community here. So it's been in a great partnership so far. Wonderful. Well, what is it that led you to working with seniors? Well, that's a unique story. Hope you have a couple of hours. But no, seriously, <laughs> my, my parents, uh, I grew up um, feeling like I was at a disadvantage, but I was really at an advantage. 
for example, when I was in elementary, my parents were born in 1913. My dad was, my mother in 1918. And so my mother was very active in PTA and being the, the, the school mom, bringing cookies and cupcakes to the class. But people would nudge me and go, hey, somebody's grandmama's here. Somebody's grandmother's here. And I would go, oh, that's my mother. And then in high school, I was able to take articles from our scrapbook at home and not go to the Encyclopedia Britannica because there was no internet. I'm kind of a little older guy too. There's no internet. But then I realized I have an advantage. My parents lived through the depression. Um, my parents were, um, um, they didn't just read about it, they actually experienced the depression and gone through a lot of things here in this country. And so it just gave me a passion for listening. And I really enjoyed just sitting down with seniors and just listening, just soaking up all the information. It's amazing to me how important that the oral tradition is and how much we lose that when we spend our lives looking at our phone yes. <laughs> and not talking with seniors. The stories are amazing. And it's a historical tradition that, that you don't get from a textbook. I agree. Um, and it's funny you say that I was out recently in the community and just it was a couple of seniors and they asked me my name. I asked them their name. And then 20 minutes later, we were just having a conversation about life. Even if it's just Hey, you remember the price of gas in you know 1956? Mm -hmm. What was the price of a loaf of bread? But it also morphs into just the respect, you know, and, and just the knowledge that our seniors have. And it's been a pleasure to work with the senior community. That's wonderful. I I feel the, the exact same way. Um, and sometimes I really miss being out in the community more and having those conversations. Um, I learned more from those stories than mm -hmm. anything else in my career, I think. Yes, I agree. I still listen to them and get whether it's grandmama's tips or someone's secret recipe or I have a bruise on my arm. Oh, honey, I got an ailment. You know, they have a, a cure for it, a holistic approach to it. But I just love it. I really love just sitting down and listening to the seniors and just engaging, not just listening, just engaging. Yep. Mm -hmm. I feel the same way. Mm -hmm. Now, you've talked a little bit about your role at Kaiser, but tell me more about that and what you're doing in our community. Absolutely. So my official title is a Medicare, Kaiser Permanente Medicare account executive. So I actually, in a nutshell, I assist seniors or elder communities with their Medicare health plans. Um, but it's much more than that. I could simplify it and say, I help them, you know, sign up for Medicare, but it is so much more than that because I listen to them. We engage in conversation. I actually build a relationship and a rapport, and that's the big thing. Um, engaging in the community, whether it be from a health fair, or I do a lot of crafts in the community. Like I'm working on one next week, we're going to be doing a, a conversation and painting. Um, so I provide the, the, the easel, the, the uh, canvas, the paint, the paint brushes, and we do a Zoom and I'll do these in person too. And we get together and we just paint and we have a conversation. And those things range from maybe a dance class to a photography class, which I hold, or various crafts. And of course, there's always the bingo. And if you haven't experienced my bingo, you need to come see my bingo. It's not your normal B1, I-19, G47. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. So I would encourage you to please check out my bingos. I will have to check out your bingo. Being in aging services, I have been to lots of bingo mm -hmm. games. So <laughs> I'm sure you have. <laughs> Even the, the caregivers, I invite the caregivers because it gives them a break. And I don't know if you're a caregiver yourself, but to anyone that's a caregiver, sometimes they need some, some time to themselves. And so now you can sit down, I'll, I'll spend an hour with them doing the bingo and it gives the caregiver a break or he and she could do something they need to do or participate, of course. But it's been a great, it's been a great thing. In fact, I was in California recently and I got emails and text messages. Hey, Bradley, we're going to do bingo this week. And I'm thinking, wow, they really missed this. And it's the engagement. It's the conversation. It is. And your personality, you know, it, you. it <laughs> takes the right person to be a community organizer and to open those doors and allow people to feel comfortable. And the fact that you focus on the caregiver as well as the individual is huge. Mm -hmm. um, they are an under-celebrated resource in our entire healthcare network. I agree. So even like before I use the, the photography class, I'm teaching seniors how to use just their smartphone and how to take better pictures. But guess what? Some of the caregivers are going, I want to do it because they typically do this thing. We're doing selfies, but I'm teaching them so much more than a selfie. And I'm teaching them really a skill set, you know, about photography and the caregivers I'm finding are enjoying this as well. That's wonderful. Um, we spend a lot of time here at Second Wind Dreams focused on the caregivers too. Mm -hmm. um, without them, 
we don't have the the opportunity to age in place that we all want to have. Yes. Um, so supporting them is of the utmost importance. I agree. Can you tell us of any upcoming events um, later in the summer that are happening for you? Absolutely. So the um, I'm weekly, every other week, every other Thursday at three o'clock, I host a virtual bingo. And so that's just set on the calendar. And it's not limited to any particular senior center or individuals. All you have to do is contact me at bradley.x.kp, I'm sorry, bradley.x dot spheres at kp.org and i'll definitely send you out the information the invites to be part of the bingo those happen regular uh, twice a month i also do a craft twice a month and the craft varies for easter i did a wooden egg and we provide all the again all the supplies and the seniors got together and we you know we do a craft together so upcoming events would be um the continuation of the bingo various crafts every month that's going to continue on throughout the summer and my photography class if you have a cell phone and you want to know how to take better pictures or more pictures than, than just this pose mm -hmm. you need to be in my photography class it's called picture this it's a beginner's photography class so those are some of the ongoing things and again you can always check our website or check out you know email me and i'll give you up-to-date things because we just finished may fest we'll be at the zoo for seniors day it's just a number of things we do in the community I love it. And it sounds like I'm going to have to join a bunch of your classes. <laughs> yeah. I encourage you to. I look forward to it. Well, I have one more question, and this is for you okay. rather than your organization. How do you change the perception of aging? That's a very good question. How do I change the perception of aging? I would tell you that I personally, and you said from my perspective, I don't look at aging as a handicap or a nuisance. You know, as I alluded to earlier, my dad was a, an older gentleman when he had me. My dad was over 50 years old when I was born. So I, perception of aging is a blessing to me. I heard my dad say, son, you don't get old being a fool, you know, and I was like, what does he mean by that? When I was in high school, what do you mean? But you're right. Life experiences, you know, teach us something. And so my perception of aging is it's an honor to, to be, you know, to be a part of the family. It's an honor to, to live a long life and a full life. So my perception is... How do we change it to say it's a blessing, it's a gift. Every time I see an elder or older adult, I refer to them as an elder. I'll see a, a, a mom or a lady that's older than me and I'll say, hey mother, not my biological mother, but I'm giving her the respect and honor. And you know, I just say, hey, you know, I'll call a man an elder. And an elder to me means you're wise, you have wisdom. So I, my perception is I'm gonna spread the good news that being old is okay, Be, getting old is okay. Trust me, every day we get a little older, it's a blessing. And so I just want to say, don't push them out of the community, invite them in, because they bring a lot of wisdom, a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge. And believe it or not, they have a lot of laughs still in them. I think we forget that there is so much joy possible and so much play in our elders. And in those of us who are, are hitting elder ages, um, this month, yeah, me too. This month I start to qualify for my very first senior services. <laughs> I'm thinking, I don't feel old. Well, you know, my mother is gonna be 83 and she doesn't feel old either. She talks about volunteering for seniors. Yes. And um, it's all your perspective and how much joy you can pour into that. I say that, um... A body in motion stays in motion, but that also goes to our mind. A mind in motion stays in motion. So something I do very simple during the bingo, it's, it's a memory thing, but I'll say, anybody remember the price of gas in 1957? And we laugh about it. Or what's the, the you know, what was the price of bread in 19, you know, whatever, we pick a year. One, I'm challenging their memory. And two, we, we laugh about it and go, wow, look how things have changed. And with any change, there's gonna be some, some growth and there's gonna be some pain, but we also look at the positive, you know, it's like planting a seed. Yes, I can plant it, but I need to go back and nurture it and develop it to see it sprout. And even once it sprouts, I don't truly enjoy the rose until I see the bloom blossom. And so that's how I look at aging. My perspective is you're a rose, you're blooming and you're blossoming. And what a pleasure to be in your presence. That is just fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> no one else during this interview series has de described it quite that way. <laughs> and it's lovely imagery. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I would just say that um, Kaiser Permanente is an awesome and amazing place to work, 
to be a member and to see us out in the community. It's just amazing the things as I read daily. I've only been with Kaiser Permanente right at a year. Next week would be a year for me. But as I Google or as I go to our own website, I go, wow, we're doing this, we're doing that. How do I get involved? And so there's so many amazing things that Kaiser Permanente is doing here locally and nationally. Well, we have enjoyed your partnership very much here at Second Wind Dreams. Likewise. And I want to thank you for being on Let's Talk Aging today. Hey, I'm available anytime you need me. And again, can I give a plug? Can I give my name or number one more time? Please do. So I'm Bradley Spears with Kaiser Permanente. If you have any Medicare questions, feel free to give me a call. If you want to get involved in a bingo or a craft or just, hey, Bradley, you mentioned some of those things on the, on the interview. How do I get engaged in that? Pick up the phone. Call me at 470-306-306. 8641. I'd be happy to assist you or any caregiver. We thank you very much for your service and for being part of this today. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Bradley. And thank you for joining us at Let's Talk Aging. I would like to ask you to take a look at our website. Our dreams program, our very first program, is one that connects not only the older adult living in long-term care, but the community, the staff, and really creates not only the dream, but a sense of community around the older adult. There are many ways to be involved by being a program member, by being a volunteer. We even have community coalitions that have sponsored memberships. Check out our dreams program and let's talk about it. We'll see you next time on Let's Talk Aging. Thank you.